is Grace Park from South Korea and today first I got a new book stand and it's very easy to repair so you do like this and it's gone and when you pull it to here it bends and the coolest thing is you similar not similar to another book stands you can do like this Original book stands, you have to do this and this, but this is this and this. And another thing, when I got this book, but not this is not the book we're going to read. When you can see back, there's a clip, clip, clip. So, when I have book like a small book, not thick book, you can hang it and when you need when you're not done but the time is over you can do like this you can do like this and when you need it you can pull off and read it so this is my new book stand and today i got a book and I think we're not going to do like this or do like this. I don't know because the book can be this, but it's too big. I don't know. So let's start. Make way for ducklings. Look, it got cardico gold medal. So this book means it's so good. Make way for, for ducklings. Quack, quack. <coughs> quack, quack. It was my quack, quack. Quack, quack. Make way for the ducklings. Oh, so cute. Oh, so many pages. Front. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Mollard were looking for a place to live, but every time Mr. Mollard saw what looks like a nice place, Mrs. Mollard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods are turtles in the water and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or tur turtles so they flew on and flew and on because why they said foxes and turtles because there's a wood so there might be foxes to eat the baby, ah! sorry, eat the babies. Uh, turtles in the water will not protect the babies. Wait, sorry. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any farther. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night, cracked Mr. Marler. So down they flapped. Next morning, they fished for the bre their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond. But they didn't find much because it's the public garden. Mm, just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was push, pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Oh, I think that's the driver. Driver. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mollard. 
Mr. Molly. Being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer, but the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water. So the mullers followed them all round the pond and got another breakfast better than the first. Mm. I want a breakfast. It, it. I like this place," said Mrs. Mowler, as they climbed out on the back and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles, and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good," said Mrs. Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that. So did her, but. Look out! Look out! Squacked Mrs. Muller all of a distance. You get run over. Ah, oh, I need this thing now. Oh, I said I need this thing. Whatever. She got a breath. She added, "This is no place for babies. With all those horrid things rushing about, we'll have to live somewhere else." Oh, good. Maybe more time than the last one. So they flew over. Become hill and road, the state house, but there was no place there. Yeah, bad thing. Oh. 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 Bad. They looked in. Oh, were Spring Square, but there was no water to swim in. Poor guineas. Ducklings. There, then they flew over the Charles River. This is better," cried Mrs. Muller. Mr. Muller, sir. That island looks like a nice, quiet place," said, and it's only a little way from the public garden. I think the public garden is here. Ah,、uh, here, I think. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks like just the right place to hatch ducklings. Yeah. Oh, rig. So they chose a cozy, cozy spot among the bushes near the water, and settled down to build their nest. And only just in time, for now they are were bending to moult. All their old wings. Feathers started to drop out, and they will not be able to fly again until the new one grew in. <laughs> Funny man. 
But of course they could swim, and one day they swam over to the park on the river bank, and there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts, and after that, the mallards called on Michael every day. Huh. Huh. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go to visit. Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. One day, the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, and then Lack, then Mac and Mac and Quack and Pack and huh? all, all Cack, all Cack and Pack and Quack. Mister and Miss Smaller was bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings, and it kept them very busy. Ah, oh, cute! One day, Mister Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like. Farther on, so off he said, "I'll meet you in a week in the public garden." He quacked over his shoulders. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry," said Mrs. Mallard. "I know all about bringing up children," and she did. She taught them how to swim and dive. She. <coughs> Sorry. She taught them. I walk in a to walk in a line to come when they were called and to. Keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. When at, at last she felt perfectly safe with them. She said, "One morning, come on, long children, follow me. Before you could wink, on I'll let Jack crack, lack, mag, nag, ock, ock, pack, and quack fell into line, just as they had been taught." Mrs. Mallard led the way, lead the way, into the water. And they swam behind her to the opposite bank. Bank. Money. There, where they, where there, they waddled ashore. And waddle along till they 
go to the highway. This is my list that out to cross the road. Hong Kong went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack! When Mrs. Muller as she tumbled back. Quack, 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 quack! The jack, cack, black, mac, mac, a crack, a g, a pack and crack just as loud as their little crackers could crack. The cars kept speeding by and honking and Mrs. Mallard was the ducklings and the ducklings kept right on quack quack quacking. They made such a noise that Michael came rushing, waving his arm and blowing his whistle. Quack, quack, honk, tweet! Yes. Sorry. He planted himself in the center of the road. Waste one hand to stop the traffic and then back on with the other the way policemen do for Mrs. Muller to cross over. This sound is my mother and my aunt with the phone. Sorry to bother. Mommy, be quiet! As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernal Street, Michael rushed back to the police booth. Michael booth. Ugh. He called Can see at headquarters and said, There's a family of dogs walking down the street. Can see said, Family of what? Dogs! Yes, Michael. Send a, a police car. Quick, do the babies. <laughs> sorry, it's the second time. Believe me. Ah, sorry. So sorry. So sorry. Ah! Ah! Third time. Oh. No. Meanwhile, Mrs. Marlert had reached the corner bookshop and turned into Claire Charles Charles Street with Jack Cack Lack Back Deck Quack Pack and Quack all marching in line behind her. Oh I think I have to move this thing is it took so long time. I rest started an old lady from Beckon Hill said, 
Isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, Well, now, isn't that nice? Ain't that nice? That was my Bobby. She's so bad. And when Mrs. Muller heard that she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. Mommy, that's the fair. It was my mom. When they came to the corner of the Cunn Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Charlie had Clancy. Ooh, bad Bobby. Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen uh, held back the traffic so Mrs. Mollard and the ducklings could march across the street. Right into the public garden. Inside the gate, they are all turned round to stay. Thank you to the policeman. The policeman smiled and waved goodbye. When they reached the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Bollard waiting for them just as he had promised. The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. All day long, they followed the swan boats and eat peanuts. Ah, sorry. And when night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. The end. And it was so long, I had a drink of water. And thank you, Mommy, for giving me a drink of water and filming it. And it was Make Way for Ducklings. Cardiac Code Metal. And it was the longest book I ever read and